Welcome back, Curriculum Mappers. Uh, Fanny and I are back with a, another episode of Curriculum Mapping with Google Apps. And we recently had the thought of creating a video simply on the idea of getting organized. Now, um, it was pointed out to me that I wasn't as organized as I thought I was. So we spent some time cleaning up our existing curriculum drive folder here at Washington International School and we're going to walk you through just a little bit of some of the folder structure and what might go into those folders and how permissions are granted throughout the system to make this work. And at the same time we've been building out our infographic which we had promised to create a video on. So we will be sharing this out too um, but we're going to go over simply steps one and two in this process today, just to get you organized um, and kind of see how everything fits together. So the first thing you should notice is this curriculum, Google Drive, exists in its own account, right? This does not belong to any individual at the school. So this prevents the idea of turnover where if a member of your community leaves, they leave with all your curriculum. So that's not going to happen in this case. So inside of this account, um, I've named a folder called WIS curriculum. In our case, this is the Washington International School curriculum. This is the top level folder. And inside of that folder, we have these six folders. So we're going to take turns explaining what the, these folders do and their purpose. Um, and I'm going to start by the admin folder. Now the idea behind the admin folder is simply storing all of the resources that you would typically need as an administrator of any other software uh, that you use. So um, you're essentially creating information in here that will be distributed via forms, via a number of mechanisms. The awesome tables that you've seen probably in the videos here, all of that information is controlled from the admin folder. And we will be going into more of the processes later, but I just wanted to hone in on this concept that a folder called admin exists and it should only be accessible to the either director of curriculum or the coordinator, someone who has the tech savviness to manage all of this. So Fanny, let's go on to the course descriptions. Yeah, so here the course description, it will be the folder where you will have the course description for each of the courses that you have. For example, this will be typically uh, an overview of the course, which you would like to share with parents at the beginning of the year. So all those courses will be here. And we are then going to show them how to... Resources is next. Yeah, so yeah. the next one is resources. So. The resources, the idea for resources is that teachers need a common place to store things in Google Drive, again, overcoming this idea of permissions. So by creating resource folders for the entire community in the curriculum drive, these are going to live on with the school. So they can use items in these folders. In fact, they can organize them in a way that they feel is most effective for their use, um, which you'll see in a moment can be linked to the actual unit planners. So this, and for permissions, these are typically distributed to each department. So in this case, the whole school would have viewing access to this folder. So anyone at our school can see what's in here. However, only people in the arts department will have editing access to it. So that's how we've ignore organized all of these folders. Um, it really gives ownership to this resource to the members of that subject area and yet viewing permissions to everyone. So that is the, the resource folder. Now we go on to unit planners. <laughs> so the unit planners folder will contain all the units from all the teachers. And what is really nice about this is that again, it's shared with everyone for viewing so that it can allow people to collaborate better. And actually uh, the resources 
which we had in this folder will be linked to this unit planner through the Google form that the teacher filled in. And those unit planners are generated through Autocrat. So they all have the same sort of templates, but they are all are unique because it's a um, different grade, different subject. And then we're going to talk about the outcomes. Yes, so the reason we're, we waited till after the unit planners to talk about outcomes is because these do not exist without unit planners. So the outcomes are essentially Google Forms and Google Sheets, and there's a separate form, in our case, per subject area, because each subject area has slightly different outcomes. So that's why we decided to create its own folder uh, to manage outcomes per subject area. And moving on to the last folder. Yeah, so the timelines, um, we have a separate video for that, which you can check out. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is just a spreadsheet, a Google Sheet here, which has um, all the start and end dates of each unit, which you can then uh, see on your awesome table file cabinet yeah and, and the good thing is they don't have to be exact dates they're kind of approximations because if, if you look at those previous videos it's more of a monthly overview with no precise dates it just kind of gives you a visual throughout the academic year so, so again that's a powerful way to see what's going on um, and how to um, collaborate within the school with different subject groups for example so that's a really great visual tool yeah, so just to close out, I don't know what was in the water last night or what happened, but uh, we noticed a surge in community members uh, late last night, like at 11 p.m., after some board game madness. <laughs> and this morning again, there was another surge, so there must be some conferences happening out there and more of you are joining us, so a warm welcome to all of you new members to the community and feel free to post your own resources uh, uh, that if, if you've already been doing curriculum mapping in this way, it's great. We just, we, we really want to create a conversation around this idea and develop some best practices, so. Thanks yeah. for watching. So see you soon with a new video. Bye-bye. <laughs>